We've clearly identified the problem and the solution will still be impacted by it in the first three quarters of this year. By the end of the year, it's completely sorted out. And for 2020, it is sorted out. But I would argue it's, a, you know, it's an irritating problem to have. But I would rather have that problem than having too many products and not enough customers. But still, it is slowing down our growth in North America. So, so I just wanted to zoom in on North America for a second. We got the Under Armour numbers yesterday. They're not growing in the home market. You're growing a little bit, and, and Nike's growing even faster. So talk about what's actually happening, happening on the ground from a competitive landscape. So overall, we see a solid growth in America. The market will continue to grow. It's driven by our large partners like Foot Locker, Kohl's, and DSG, and of course also the digital channels in the U.S. And we continue to invest. You probably saw that we made a great deal of getting Beyonce on board, and with Beyonce, Kanye, and Farewell, we really have probably three of the greatest creators in the world on the Alicia side, and we continue to invest on our sports side also. Yeah, tell us about that Beyonce collaboration, how it came together, and what you've got planned. We've done a deal with her where we're going to co-create products. We're going to co-brain products. The first products will come out in very limited supply by the end of the year. And then over time, we're going to build a great franchise together. She is a global idol. She has you know, a global brand and resonated globally when we made the, when we made, or made the deal you know, official. We had more than 1 billion impressions within 24 hours as the deal was signed. So a fantastic asset for us as a company. How's the Yeezy brand going? You've experimented with wider releases, the democratization of the brand, if you will. How's yeah, that experiment yeah. coming along? So 2018 was a very, very successful year for us in having a broader distribution for Yeezy. We don't expect uh, any substantial growth from the Yeezy brand this year. This is deliberate. We want to make certain that we also put a lid on. But what we've done is that we really globalized the Yeezy brand and taking the product, the 350, the 500, the 700, to all markets in the world. And we're super happy with the, the relationship we have with Connie, but also both the commercial and the brand effect of what we've done. Wanted to talk about Europe. Didn't see much growth there. The economic data we've been getting goes from bad to worse. What's going on with the consumer in Europe? So there's no doubt that the overall European market is subdued and it has been, you know, ha had a negative impact of the ongoing conversations on the Brexit. So that has created, I would say, unrest with the consumer. However, I would also say that the current, you know, lack of growth we're seeing in Europe is also due to some of the, you know, misdoings of our side. We'll return to growth from an Adidas standpoint by the end of the year in Europe. But we're not going to see high growth rates in Europe moving forward simply because the overall economy in Europe is growing at a very, very low rate. 40% e-commerce growth. I know a lot of it is the direct-to-consumer, your own website, but what other sites and partners that you work with are really resonating and doing well for you? So in the U.S., we have a very strong relationship with Amazon. In Europe, we have with Zalando. And in China, we have with Alibaba and Tencent. And these are really the growth drivers for us. And a lot of the talk about China is finally slowing down. We're not seeing that. You know, we asked the question many times. We're not seeing the slowdown. We're seeing particularly online and you know, increasing growth rate in China. Do you think it's the stimulus that's working or just you didn't see any impact to begin with because it's not higher priced or durable goods that you're selling? We're still a very, very hot brand in China. And that's why we have not seen a substantial slowdown of our business in China. You know, we have doubled our business in China within the last four years, so, and which is now the biggest business, the biggest single country in the world for us. So, so we're very, very optimistic for China also for the future. Finally, do you wish you hadn't sold TaylorMade for a fraction of the price now that Tiger Woods has made this historic comeback? No, sir. I think we need to be true to what we're doing is, and, and golf was really never a core competence of us. And I believe back then and now, it was the right decision to make despite the success of Tiger. You know, golf was not part of our, you know, golf equipment was not part of our core business. So I believe it was the right decision. I'm very happy that Tillamit has a better owner now than it had in the past.